Item Number SCP-5257 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures Information relating to larger groups exposing SCP-5257's effects will be handled by Marshall, Carter, and Dark's own misinformation campaigns. Given the embarrassment caused by this anomaly becoming publicly known, it is believed that Marshall, Carter, and Dark can be trusted to contain all information relating to the anomaly. SCP-5257's effects are explainable on an individual basis through mundane means and do not require additional containment measures. Marshall, Carter, and Dark Thaumaturges are currently working on a cure for SCP-5257. The organization has agreed to inform the Foundation when that project is completed, so this object can be reclassified as an inactive anomaly. Description SCP-5257 is a viral thaumaturgical effect that causes individuals to defecate when they experience severe anxiety relating to expected harm. SCP-5257-related defecation will occur regardless of the contents of an individual's bowels. The source of the fecal matter that is produced via this effect is currently unknown, but does match the DNA of the producing individual. SCP-5257 appears to only affect individuals employed by Marshall, Carter, and Dark, and spreads through physical contact. Given that the effect is only triggered during periods of extreme stress relating to threats of physical harm, it is currently unknown how many agents of Marshall, Carter, and Dark are under the effects of this anomaly. The anomaly was first discovered following a joint Foundation, GOC, and Marshall, Carter, and Dark assault on a Chaos Insurgency safe house in 2021. Footnote 1. See Combat Report 8291 for more details. Several agents from all involved organizations were injured. During medical treatment immediately following the firefight, mercenaries employed by Marshall, Carter, and Dark were found to be wearing adult diapers that were soiled. At first this was not understood as an anomaly, but eventually information relating to the anomaly was relayed to Foundation medical staff in order to provide better care. After SCP-5257 was properly designated and risks relating to its spread were identified, the SCP Foundation began a project to identify as much information as possible about how and why SCP-5257 was created. A collection of extant documents was searched, and new documents were sought and recovered. Initial Report Author Lana Fuentes Date March 2, 2020 Interest Unknown Identifier, anti-mugging effect. I noticed that several of our customers have complained about fear relating to robberies that are occurring in New York City as of late. I don't know for certain how credible this fear is, but I think we can possibly exploit this fear for a new product. There are a number of potential solutions, but I'm going to leave most of the details up to R&D. They seem somewhat excited about the possibilities, and I know for a fact that you can't replicate passion for a project. You're gonna put Mr. Sterling in as project lead, he seemed to be extremely eager to get started. Corporate has been on my case for months about micromanaging my team, so I'm going to step back and see how he performs. Should be good. Research Report 3 Author Adam Sterling Date March 5, 2020 Interest Unknown Identifier Anti-mugging effect Real-world testing is not promising. Vulnerability and super strength actually increases the casualty numbers, certainly for the robber. But turns out if you give an untrained person super strength, they don't act fast enough to avoid death for the companions. And that's the real issue. If we make the customer able to fight back, the death of walking partners and even innocent bystanders goes up by 174%. One guy was even still overpowered by two guys. He came out of it unharmed because he was temporarily invulnerable, but he was still beaten and robbed. It also hurt quite a bit, so I'm told. Muggings don't happen nearly as often as I was led to believe in New York. We provoked each of these test robberies through a variety of incentives and hexes. I wanted to make sure that these are real world circumstances, so I worry that the data is flawed due to the use of magic. I'm gonna dig a little deeper on how the spells work before I give up on the methods so. though. We had one fairly promising outlier. One of the researchers was robbed independent of the test and he shit himself. The robber was so overcome by the smell and weirdness, I suspect, that he left the scene without further incident. I'm gonna order some tests in the area and see how it works. Research Report 21 Author, Adam Sterling Date, March 15th, 2020 Interest, Unknown Identifier, Anti-Mugging Effect Tweaking this spell has been fun. 
A line change here, a slightly different annotation there, and it works just differently enough for me to test it for additional efficiency. In fact, there was an error in our transcription during the last testing and the defecation occurred even though the user didn't have anything in his digestive tract. I'm used to coding, but honestly, I've been learning about how similar those two fields really are. I'm gonna keep the bug spell, and I think it might be our final version. Research Report 26 Author, Adam Sterling Date, March 17th, 2020 Interest, Unknown Identifier, Anti-Mugging Effect We've run over 100 tests. I know I'm gonna have to defend this eventually, so I needed to be sure. Defecation is definitely the way to go. It decreases the risk of casualties to both the primary user and bystanders by over 93%. Nothing else comes close. I hope the higher-ups can appreciate what this data represents. Memo 2. Sender, Harazim Call. Recipient, Lana Fuentes. Lana, how much do you know about the anti-mugging project? I was reviewing the budget and it appears that R&D has used up 11% of their yearly funding on the development of a single magical spell. I don't know exactly why or how that was necessary. It's just a few lines of incantation. I'll trust you to figure out what's going on. If I gotta run interference with senior management, I will, but please look into this immediately. Memo 3. Sender, Lana Fuentes. Recipient, Adam Sterling. I just found out from my boss that you used 11% of the R&D budget in less than two weeks for a single spell. Call me as soon as you get this message. This is serious. The following phone conversation was acquired by Foundation Telecommunication AIs. Caller 1. Lana Fuentes, Marshall Carter and Dark's New York City Branch Vice President of Product Development. Caller 2, Adam Sterling, member of the Marshall Carter and Dark Research and Development Team. Caller 3, Harazim Call, Lord of Menace and holder of the Third Staff of Lies, and head of the New York City Branch of Marshall Carter and Dark. Time of Call, 9.21 to 9.24 AM, March 19, 2020. Okay, first off, I want to apologize. Don't apologize. Just explain this to me. Be detailed. Right. The initial tests weren't promising. You've seen the data, right? I have. I get that. Okay, well, Tim got robbed on the subway and then he shit himself. And it worked, so we thought we'd see if it would work for us. And? Gave us a 93% lower chance of physical harm and an 89% lower chance of the robbers taking our stuff. That was the best idea we came up with. Okay, but who are we supposed to market this to? I don't really understand. Who the fuck is going to buy this? Lana, if you don't mind, I'd like to cut in. I think what Lana is trying to say is that any reasonable person would look at your idea and realize that we can't sell this to a high-end client. Oh, I actually did consider that. That's why I wanted as much data as possible to back up the product. Your data doesn't change the fact that we can't sell this to anyone. Okay, yeah, no. I get that now, I just thought that maybe I could change your minds. So, you knew this would be a problem and you spent 45 million dollars to test a spell that makes you shit yourself. Yes ma'am. I know it's hard to interpret my tone because my voice is being directly into your head at a high volume, but I am very disappointed in you personally. I had high hopes for you in this company. Actually, I should apologize, Mr. Sterling. I don't think that we'll be retaining your services. This is the kind of mistake that is going to be extremely troubling to explain to the partners. And frankly, you've shown a lack of self-awareness and common sense here. I sold my house in LA and just moved my family out here. We have a blood contract. I think it's reasonable to say that this is for cause, so the contract you signed with me is invalid. Lana, if you'd handle the severance. Understand you are still under the effects of the non-disclosure spell. Keep your work here. Lana, I'm sorry. This won't happen again. Your work here, confidential, or you forfeit your eternal soul. Security is already outside your office. They'll wait while you gather your things and escort you outside. We do not have to do this, but Harazim Calls authorized me to offer you six months severance pay to ease your transition. The call ends. Memo 13. Sender, Adam Sterling. Recipient. Lana Fuentes. Hi, Lana. Your security guy wasn't able to recognize my spell, Foki, so I went ahead and took the finished spell home with me. Wasn't that hard to tweak it. 
My background is encoding, but the bug we had earlier taught me that spells just use wands and portals instead of ones and zeros. Tell him I'm sorry I had to use him as a vector, but honestly, he was going to shit himself in those circumstances anyway, and I knew his morning routine before work pretty well. Turns out another organization appreciates me a lot more than you ever did. I'm only sorry I don't get to see your face when you shit yourself. It should be noted that Adam Sterling was among the injured agents taken prisoner during the 2021 assault on the Chaos Insurgency safe house. At the time of the raid, the subject's importance to Marshall Carter and Dark was unknown. He was surrendered to their custody at their request. At this point, Adam Sterling began to display SCP-5257 symptoms. Given his likely fate in Marshall Carter and Dark custody, it is unknown if this was related to the anomaly or if it was a natural reaction. Thank you all so much for watching, and a huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. Special shout out to Everborn, Joe Light, The Bone Man, Tannis Ruler of All, and Doomsday LLC, Prince and Design. If you'd like to help support the channel, head on over to patreon.com slash drmaxwell, link in the description.